Hello everybody and welcome back to Carried Away Travels. This week we're going to be refocusing on some of our adventures in Iceland in April of this past year and I want to give you some practical tips about how to prepare to chase the northern lights. Now just a few weeks ago the entire U.S. got to experience a natural phenomenon that hasn't happened on this scale in a very long time. In May of 2024, there was a huge geomagnetic storm and there were northern lights as far south as Florida of the USA, which is pretty much unheard of. Usually, you have to go up north to countries like Iceland, Norway, Sweden for a good chance to see these lights. Some northern states in the U.S. get them pretty frequently as well. I know I have family up in Michigan who gets to see them, but this was absolutely incredible. My entire feed was just filled with pictures of people in the United States who got to see these northern lights, and I didn't get to see them. I'm a little bit bitter, okay? I'm working on it. I will recover eventually, but for now, I am a little bit angry because I spent... Two nights in Iceland's winter, freezing my booty off, trying to see the lights, and a bunch of people got to step out into their back porch and just snap some pictures. So it's not fair. But, but if you also did not get to experience that, or maybe you did, you're one of the lucky few that I'm trying not to be mad at, and you still would like to go out into the wilds of like Iceland or one of these other countries and see the Northern Lights again. These are some practical tips for you. The experience is going to be very different than what you would have experienced here in the US in these warm, balmy May temperatures. So I just wanna give you some best practices for how to increase your chances of seeing the lights and how to dress for the experience. Okay, so this wasn't actually going to be my original video, but I've been doing some research and I just have to share. Apparently, since this year is supposed to be so crazy just for, so, um, just for Northern Lights in general, they're actually expecting another really great Northern Lights show across the Northern part of the world on June 6th. So if you were like me and you missed the one on May 10th or whatever, Apparently, the sun's making another rotation and we're supposed to get more activity from a particularly large sunspot and um, 27 days from May 10th, they're expecting there may be another really good light show on June 6, 2024. So mark that date on your calendar, make some plans, go out in the countryside so you don't have to freeze your butt off in Iceland to see it, okay? I will be. Let's hope for the best. In case any of you are doubting my sources here, I got it from weatherandradar.com, right? They have a lot of cool information about the Northern Lights here, and they say that they expect another light show Thursday, June 6, 2024. If this is false information, this blame them. A couple of the tips that I'm going to share will be Iceland specific, but there are some others that are just going to be best practices for anywhere you're trying to see the Northern Lights. So if you're not in Iceland, just ignore those. You can skip forward a little bit. But the very first thing I would recommend if you're in Iceland would be to visit the Reykjavik Northern Light Center. Now, the particular tour that we booked for our Northern Lights experience actually included two free tickets to the Aurora Reykjavik. However, they had to be used on the day of your tour. And since our tour got delayed, we ended up just buying tickets ourselves for our first day in Iceland because we had time to kill while we were in Reykjavik. And I am really glad that we went, even though we had to pay for it. This was a really cool experience. The Northern Lights Center is completely dedicated to, surprise, surprise, the Northern Lights, but it gives you a lot of background on the history and the science. So you'll walk through a hallway that shares folklore about the Northern Lights from around the world and what people thought the lights meant. And it's very interesting to see how 
the connotations of the lights differed from culture to culture. You'll learn about the history of the people who studied them. You'll learn about how they're actually formed, which if you don't know is solar flares, which I'll get into a little bit later, but you can actually understand what makes them happen and what causes the colors. They have a beautiful video of Northern Lights happening at these famous landmarks all over Iceland. And then the last room is kind of dedicated to helping maximize your experience with the northern lights they'll give you some tips on what to look for how to take good photos with your phone or your camera and then just in case you don't happen to see the northern lights they actually have a little photo booth where you can take a picture and they will photoshop the northern lights behind you looks very fake but i love this photo for some reason <laughs> Our experience also included a few minutes with a VR headset, and that was just so interesting because you could look all around with the headset on, and they were playing footage of Northern Lights, and that was just a really cool way to kick off our trip. And it was very interesting to see the really, really colorful lights and feel like we were right there. So the next thing is to find somewhere that's really dark. You want to get away from the city. Now, if you have your own car, this is probably going to be really easy. You can pretty much go anywhere that's not Reykjavik or the South Coast, which are the two biggest cities. Um, just go someplace dark. One of the national parks, honestly, a random mountain peak or road, as long as there's a pull-off. You just want to get away from any of the lights. It's very similar to stargazing. The less artificial light there is, the better your eyes are going to adjust to the darkness and the less interference there's going to be with whatever light is coming from the sky. Now, I am a bit salty about this because the absolute best night of the Northern Lights during our entire trip happened while we were staying in the South Coast and we didn't have a car. We had booked a trip with Exotica, so we were kind of stranded at night. The best lights are going to be around midnight to 3 a.m. and you can't just like grab a taxi and ask them to take you in the middle of nowhere. So we were looking for the lights. Daniel did see some color in the sky, but literally like 25, 30 minutes down the road in a small town with out all these big lights there was an absolutely gorgeous northern lights display one of the hotels in town has a northern lights camera and we watched it the following morning and i was so mad because if we'd had a car it it was right there but we couldn't see anything because the city was big enough that it just blocked out those lights that were literally happening right above us so that would definitely be one of my bigger regrets about not having a car in Iceland. For our first time, it worked out. But if you're thinking about renting a car or maybe a van and doing it that way, it is going to give you a lot more flexibility to see the Northern Lights versus taking a tour. It also just puts everything on your own time frame, which kind of simplifies everything. All right, so the next thing you need to do to maximize your chances of seeing the lights are to seek clear skies. You don't want clouds. Now, you may remember from back in your elementary days, there are several layers of clouds in our atmosphere. The ones you really need to watch out for are the low level clouds because those are just so close, they will block anything. And you really want as few mid level clouds as possible as well because both of those can block the northern lights. So you want clear skies. Our guide told us if you can see the stars, that's a good sign, both as far as how dark it is and how clear the skies are. You just don't want anything blocking your view of the lights. The next thing you really wanna keep an eye on is the solar activity. Now, in case you weren't aware, the northern lights are actually caused from solar flares. Yay, more science. So how this works, the solar flares come off of the sun and it takes about 20 hours for the best ones to reach our atmosphere. So they reach earth and then they travel along our magnetic poles and then they interact with the gases in our atmosphere and create lights. Now, the color of the lights is actually determined 
by the amount of oxygen and nitrogen in the atmosphere at that point. So you have this whole spectrum of colors and it really depends on how that flare slight interacts with those particles, which is really cool. So you never know really what you're gonna get. But the biggest thing is the more solar activity that's happening about a day before you're gonna go, the better chances you have of that energy interacting with the particles and creating the lights. Now, to actually go about tracking that activity, there are a number of different online websites that you can check out. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has one called the Aurora Dashboard. It's experimental, but it'll give you some pretty good information on just conditions to see the light in general. Otherwise, I recommend this app. This is the My Aurora Forecast and Alerts. We had this downloaded while we were in Iceland. It has some really cool features. It tracks the cloud cover, your chances of seeing the lights in any given location. Um, it also has a feature where people using the app can report lights near them. So if you happen to be in that general location, you can drive over there and hopefully get the same show that they're getting. There's just some really nice features. It's free. If you have access to that, it'll be a really good resource. And the most practical tip, if you are planning a Northern Lights excursion for any of these freezing cold Northern countries, pile on the layers. It was cold when we visited Iceland. It was April. It was around freezing the whole time. Um, once the sun goes down, it is painful. And I do not know how to emphasize that enough. I know I'm weak, okay? I do not do well in cold, but it has been a long time since I so quickly felt cold just seep into my bones. And I was shocked because I was wearing the same clothes I had worn all day, which were thick socks, a full set of thermals, a pair of jeans, and a sweater and a waterproof ski coat, hat, gloves, the whole shebang, I was in pain. It was so bad because it just gets ridiculous once the sun goes down. So the next night I learned my lesson. I added a full additional layer. So I was wearing three layers of clothing and that helped. It delayed the inevitable. So this is something where you may want to actually invest in an outfit for the Northern Lights Tour. If you don't want to buy something specifically for this, it's actually very common to rent outdoor gear in Iceland. They just know we're gonna come in unprepared. So you can go to one of these stores and you can rent an outfit for the day or for your trip that's going to be much better suited to this weather than what you may be bringing from home. So just keep that in mind. Now, I was so glad I had my electric hand warmers. I mentioned those in my packing video for Iceland. Those saved me, all right? I was so miserable and I remembered I had those in my backpack and I shoved them in my pants and then I shoved my hands in the pockets with them and they brought some feeling back into my body. Um, th I think those are a good investment. Either way, if you're gonna be in Iceland in the winter, they heat up fast. They're not like the little ones you have to shake and then it's like, oh, it'll be warm in 20 minutes. Like these are ready to go in like 60 seconds or less and they have three levels. So that is something else I would recommend just to stay warm. Make sure you have a hat, you have gloves, if you're driving your own car, make sure it has plenty of gas so you can keep the heater on. With our particular tour, I was hopping onto the bus to warm up, then coming back off and then hopping back in the bus. It's it's just gonna get to you, um, but proper clothes do help a lot. And last but not least, temper your expectations. This was one of the first pieces of advice our tour guide gave us and it ended up being good advice. Again, you may have seen these gorgeous pictures all over the internet, whether that was from a few weeks ago or just whenever. Um, those tend to be 
rare occurrences. If you get to see the entire sky lit up with northern lights, you are fortunate. It does not happen for everyone. More often than not, the lights are either flashes, like the green glow up there and it's gone, or they are just kind of a smaller patch. It is not as common to have this beautiful sweeping vista of all these different colors. It's often one color and it can be there and gone or it's just very subtle. So in our case, we had a little both of that. We saw a green flash. We saw a glow that lit up the horizon for a minute or so and then disappeared. And then later on, I think about an hour later, we had this cool green blob up in the sky that was a little bit more of a dancing, but we only got the color green. And it was still cool um, for us. Like, I've been wanting to see the Northern Lights forever. It was really awesome that we were able to go to Iceland. We were able to see them. But I definitely went into this like, all right, I'm going to see the purples and the greens and it's going to be everyone that's awesome. And that's not always realistic. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but just temper your expectations. You're going out. It's, it's a natural phenomenon. You can't control it. There, so even if all of the stars are aligned with the sky being clear and it being dark, you just may not see this jaw-dropping display. But it's worth the risk to go out and, and see what may happen. So... Just keep that in mind, have, you know, the right attitude, and depending on how you go about it, you may get more than one chance to go out, so just keep your spirits up, and I would say plan to at least have a couple nights where you go out and try to see the lights just in case. For our particular Northern Lights experience, we actually booked a guided tour through Viator. Now, there are tons of companies that will take you out on a Northern Lights excursion if you're in Reykjavik, Iceland, but I just always tend to go straight to Viator because I love the platform and all the perks it has, specifically the fact that you can cancel up to 24 hours before your tour and every booking gets you points that you can use on future tours. So I went on Viator to check out their tours and I found this company. We originally booked with them to take a tour the first night that we were there, but they contacted us and canceled because there was going to be a lot of cloud cover and they didn't think our chances were good, which I appreciated. They gave us the opportunity to reschedule for free, so we booked a tour for later in the week with them and ended up going out. They did a great job. The guides were very awesome. They gave us great information about the lights. They gave us hot chocolate, most importantly. It was delicious. And overall, the tour was a very positive experience. However, our first night, we did not see lights. So the biggest reason I ended up booking with this company is because they had a free rescheduling policy, which we ended up using. They, that basically says if you do not see lights on your tour with them, you can reschedule for free anytime during your trip or they will give you a voucher that's good for like up to five years. Like it was a pretty good policy. So we could come back and ride with them again. So I was glad that policy existed, but that was actually the only complaint I had about this particular company. We used that policy to return on a second night with them. And I followed the instructions. I called and they said, oh yeah, uh, we can do that. Email us. So then I emailed them and they confirmed that I was, that Daniel and I were good to ride with them a second night. Apparently it was a very busy night and there was three or four different buses that picked up people. And the first night they called our names. So we're sitting there waiting for them to call our names, all the buses, but the last one come and go, they load up and they still have not called our names. So we go up and talk to the guy, and he happened to have two seats left. Because I guess someone else didn't show. Um, so that made me a little upset, if I'm being entirely honest. That our names were not on the list, because we stood out there in the cold for a good hour. 
waiting for the buses to come. And I would have been very angry, honestly, probably devastated if they had come and gone and left us because our names weren't on the list. So I, that is my only complaint. It worked out, but it could have been very bad. That is just my honest feedback and review of this particular tour. Again, nine out of 10 things went perfectly right. There was just that one thing that could have gone wrong. And I just wanted to be fully upfront about that. However, very happy with the rest of our tour. Guides were great. Service was really good. If you are interested in booking that particular tour, I'm going to include the Viator link in this video description. Um, I am a Viator affiliate. So if you book that tour or any other tours through that initial link, I will receive a small commission. Doesn't cost you anything. Just helps support the blog. Again, I really like Viator. Um, I know there's some other ones like Get Your Guide. All great. I just tend to go to Viator to begin with. So if you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer those for you. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you stopping by the channel and trusting me to provide you with helpful information. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop those below and I will get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel before you go. It means a lot to me and I always aim to provide you with useful information that makes your trips much easier. If you're interested, I also have a full written blog post as usual on my website at CochraneWriting.com on the Carried Away Travels blog. In case you want to reference any of this information a little bit faster, you can always scroll through that article to get all these tips again and some additional pictures and such. I also encourage you to check out the rest of my posts about Iceland. We did a lot of really cool stuff. And so if you're planning a trip there, I know those will be helpful for you. Thank you again for stopping by and I wish you many happy travels.